YouTube salute. It's Monday, Monday mail day number two. All right, here to answer questions from the subscribers that's been supporting me since day uno. All right, so if you're new to my channel, thumbs up the video, click the bell icon to be notified when I upload new content and go live. Also, cast your vote for Kofi's Hip Hop Hall of Fame. The link is in the description. All right, let's start with the first question. Mr. Ray, Mr. Ray, what it do? Will you check out the new Crooked Eye and Joel Ortiz joint project? Yeah, I'm going to check that out. I saw that information last week on HipHopDX.com. I was like, oh, wow, they're going to do an um, a album together? I'm definitely going to check it out. I think it's about, like, what, eight, nine tracks? I believe I saw the track um, the track listing. So it's about eight, nine tracks. I'm going to definitely check that out. And I might end up doing a review. It depends how my schedule is. If I have time, I'll probably do a review. Even if it's a quick review, I still might want to do a review so people can, you know, understand what I thought about the album. I can hear my perspective. And, yeah, we'll take it from there. So thank you, Mr. Ray. All right, second question is Jesse Sorbello. Sorbello, excuse me. Have you heard of the foundation with Jaquan? If you, sh if not, you should really check it out. Quality in depth hip hop history lessons for days. Peace. All right, what's up, Jesse? Um, I haven't heard about that, and thank you for dropping the link below. I'm gonna definitely have to check that out. Um, like I said, any, any subscribers have any, you know, great documentaries, things I can check out? Let me know, please. I really appreciate that. All right. Next question is from T23X Country. Is Beats by the Pound the greatest production team ever in rap? Hmm. I don't know. They up there in the top five. And if you don't know who Beats by the Pound is, everybody, Beats by the Pounds did the production for No Limit. So let's, let's, let me clarify that right now. So they're up there because they did a lot of great hits over there at no limit man you're talking about masterpiece silk the shocker c murder mia x mystical the list goes on and on and on even this was stuff for snoop at one point so i like them as far as the production team you got to consider neptunes you got to consider organized noise that did stuff for outcast and goody mob um the production team for bad boy records the production team for death row or after aftermath like, yeah, Death Row, Stamp Sneed, that was doing stuff for Dre and stuff. So, the Hitman. So, they're up there, though. They're, they're definitely in the top five. But if, if you consider them the greatest production team ever, I mean, I'm not going to be mad. But I know they're up there. I would really have to go down and break down, you know, stuff. But um, not only they had great hits, they actually, you know, helped produce gold and platinum albums. And I'm talking about not just getting the sales, but classic great albums that I can still play to this day. Felt like I opened up the plastic out of a CD case and bam, put it in. And you can hear that, you know, that great sound. But thank you, um, T20X Country. All right, so we got Cliff Booth. Snoop's Dogfather album, Your Personal Opinion. I've re-listened to it over and over the years. And to be honest, it's a classic album. It has aged well. It just dropped at the wrong time, in my opinion. So that's my question. Now, how do you really feel about it? See, people were expecting Dre beats, but Daz and Pooh did their thing, in my opinion. I'm glad you brought this up, Cliff. I'm glad you brought this up. I was just telling somebody about Snoop Dogg. Um, I think that album, the world wasn't ready to hear The Dog Father. It wasn't a weak album. It was like... The sound at that time, like, yo, what is this? Because think about it. That's 1996. That, that album came out, I want, I want to say a week, yo, it came out a week after Machiavelli, November 1996. Remember, Snoop Dogg was on trial. He was fighting, you know, that homicide. So many things was going on. But when we heard Snoop Dogg after Doggy Style, we heard on Murder Was the Case. We heard him on Above the Rim soundtrack. You heard him like he um, curated the dog food. He did so many things. Two of America Most Wanted on Tupac All Eyes on Me album. So you're like, damn, I know Snoop about to come with it. I know Snoop about to come with it. So it's like, yo, what is this? And you hear this Charlie Wilson sample and this type of like, it's like a 70s style. Like, I don't want to hear this because you wanted to hear that G-Funk classic stuff. Yeah, I felt that album. 
Snoop could have did that album at a different time. Maybe like the early 2000s. And I think people would have appreciated that work. Yeah, that, that, that album right there, I think it actually put a blemish on Snoop record because it, it took him for to go back to New Limit to kind of get his status back up. That's my personal opinion, like I said. But I felt that you heard Doggy Style, then you hear Dolph. I'm like, what the hell is this? It was like this weird transition of one minute you over here in the streets, now you the dog father. So it's like, yo, what the hell? Like, you know, so I think the world didn't didn't see that coming. That's why I think if he would have actually gave us bits and pieces to different people's music, we probably would have saw that. Now, some people can say, well, in Tube America Most Wanted, he had that little, you know, smooth style. Yeah, but still, Snoop was already rapping like that already, man. So you can't say that. So, but it's, it's the production we're talking about. The production, like Cliff said, we had DJ Pooh and Daz. They have great beats, but everybody was expecting this Dre hardcore sound. So, but thank you. Next question. Mr. Ray, who's your favorite white rapper? My favorite white rapper. Who would that be? Who would that be? Um, I'm not going to say I have a favorite, but I have some white rappers like R.A. The Rugged Man. Um, e put me on English Frank. I was happy he put me on English Frank. I was happy about that. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? It's, it's hard to say. It's hard to say because, you know, I don't know. Like I said, it's just hard to say. But I, I'll have to probably go with R.A. the Rugged Man. I would probably have to go with R.A. the Rugged Man. And somebody going to come in, oh, man, you don't like Eminem? Bro, I don't care for Eminem like that. I used to like Eminem at the beginning of his career. But I'm like, you you saying the same shit over and over and over. Like, the shit is overkill. redundant. Like, man, I don't want to hear this stuff no more. You know, Show me something else. I'm tired of you talking about your mama and your sister and your daddy whooping your ass, your stepdaddy. Dude, that shit gets played out. You know, where's the substance? Where's the growth? Show me something else. So that's me. You know, Eminem on 8 Mile soundtrack and stuff like that. That was tight. But after that, I've never was impressed after that. I felt like, okay, I don't want to hear this no more. So, but I think R.A. the Rugged Man is um, probably my favorite white rapper. Let's see, we have another question. The next question is, is there any such thing as brown privilege? Brown privilege. Yes, to a certain degree, there is something as brown privilege. And I'm going to explain to you. We're talking about Latinos, right? Latinos are racially discriminated. I'm not going to lie about that. We're not going to sit here and play like that stuff doesn't happen. But at the same time, though, some... Latinos, and I've seen this from my experience, and some Latinos have told me this, especially when I was in graduate school, that their fair skin, it's like they can get treated by white people and accepted. They'll get accepted better. But like the dark-skinned Latinos, they'll be um, undermined, and they'll, they'll, they'll just feel like, you know, they're just at the bottom of the caste system. So I do agree with that. But... um. Besides that, though, that's all the questions we have for the week. Like I said, I want to thank everybody that's always supporting the channel and, you know, showing me love. I appreciate you. So many great things is coming to the channel. Like I said, this is mail day number two. I'm going to do mail day number three next week. And then I'm going to make sure that, um, you know, you get everything in the, um, you put your comments, excuse me, put your questions in the community tab. You can email me your questions. You can put it in the, um, the videos, like the comment sections, you know, everything about my email stuff is in the description. Also, I want to give a shout out to my boy, Grasshopper. Grasshopper, thank you. His birthday was last week. Happy solo return to Grasshopper. Um, he's a beautiful soul, man. He's my brother from another. I appreciate him. I want to give a shout out to some good people right now. So just everybody know who's who. I want to give a shout out to some of my clients I've been training. Um, Taj Ford. Um, he's doing a great job. I can't wait to see him back on that basketball court. He's going to dominate. I want to give a shout out to some people that's been supporting me behind the scenes. Um, Jacob Poss. Jacob Poss, shout out to him. He's my Muay Thai instructor. 
like a brother to me. He lives in Florida. He has a gym. So if you out there in Miami, Florida, you want to get some boxing Muay Thai training in, learn how to fight, go to Wolfpack Boxing Gym. Go to Wolfpack Boxing Gym. Check him out, man. Also want to give a shout out to the boys. Glad and he's showing me some great love, man. He's like a brother from another man and wishing all the what the best for him on his end. He just showing me great things. I want to give a shout out to Michael Anthony, my brother out there in New York. He's always holding me down. I want to give a shout out to Uncle Kenny. Uncle Kenny, thank you so much. You're doing great things. I want to give a shout out to Justin Blakely. That's my little bro right there. We're going to be doing a video soon talking about black excellence, talking about solutions we can do for our community. So that video is coming soon. Give a shout out to my boy, J-Rod, Chad. Um, he has a business, two businesses. He has a speed and agility business. business. If you want to learn footwork drills, you want to actually take your athleticism to the next level, check him out on Instagram. Um, that's, let me get that for you real quick. Because I don't want to give the wrong... Dang, y'all be like, hey, what the hell? Oh, still bodies. Still bodies. And I'll spell it out to you. S-T-E-E-L-E-B-O-D-I-E-S underscore U. Still bodies U. And he also has another business. Um, this business called AK3 Marketing. And he actually helped. Um, he created one of my intros you always see. So check him out. His information is in the um, description. And that's about it, man. Like I said, the people that's been giving me donations on Venmo, Cash App, um, Streamlabs, shout out to Lucky, shout out to Grasshop, shout out to Jody um, from Jody's Corner. Please subscribe to his channel. Shout out to um, Brittany. She gave me a donation. Shout out to Tiffany. She gave me a donation. Shout out to Bella. She gave me a donation. So love is love. Salute.